Tonight we come together to celebrate and recognize the outstanding, outstanding accomplishments of the recipients of the two highest honors bestowed by the UTC Alumni Board. That of the Outstanding Service Award and the Distinguished Alumnus Award. I would like to thank all of you for being here tonight to honor these special folks. At this time, I would like to introduce members of the UTC Alumni Board who sponsor this event. You are, special, you are our special guest tonight. Please stand when I introduce you, and if everyone would just hold their applause to the end. First, Julie Berenger. Where is Julie? Of course she's not in here. Okay. I'll call her out when she gets back. A very important person to me, the incoming president, President-elect Doug Brown. Doug has had two full years of training and he's ready to go. May 19th, Doug. <laughs> Arnold Farmer. Where's Arnold? Golly, okay. All right, uh, and I'll, you know, give a little side talk about my mentor, Scott Leroy. Past president, I learned everything from Scott and Tom. Charles Mitchell, Charles is here, and Doug Swafford, thank you guys for coming out tonight. I will harass both those other two when they come in. <laughs> we also have past presidents of the alumni, alumni board who are attending. Uh, we have Charles Pierce, Kim White, and a very, and there's Julie Berenger. <laughs> Julie Berenger, please enter the room. <laughs> Julie, you missed me when I called your name a second ago. And Ar that's not Arnold, sorry. Um, <laughs> and, and a very, very special, seriously mentor and great friend of mine, Tom Lodge, who is also the uh -huh. UTAA current president. <laughs> Thank you to these alumni for their faith faithful support of our alma mater. It is an honor to recognize at this time the past recipients of the Outstanding Service Award who are with us tonight. Again, if you'd please stand and hold your applause to the end. Uh, we have Ms. Ruth Holmberg. We also have Arnold Farmer walking in the back of the room there. Hey, Arnold. <laughs> you, you missed your applause a minute ago. Uh, we have Chancellor Emeritus Fred O'Bear and his wife Ruth. Again, these are past recipients of the Outstanding Service Award. Charles Pierce, who's here with his wife, Ricky. Charles, again. Chancellor Emeritus Bill Stacy, who also won this award with his wife, Sue, who can't be here tonight. We're, all, we're honored to have three former distinguished alumni recipients with us this evening. Uh, Tom Griscom, who's here with his wife, Marion. Not standing. Max Fuller with his wife, Janie. And Don Leppard, who was honored last year with his wife, Kim. Let's give these people a round of applause. <clears throat> Other special guests from the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga include UTC Chancellor Dr. Steve Angle, who you're going to hear for, from in a few moments, and his wife, Dr. Dominique uh, Ballinger. Dr. Brian Rowland, Vice Chancellor for Development and Alumni Affairs and Executive Director of the UC Foundation. That is such a long title. <laughs> Dr. Jeff Elwell, Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, and his wife, Edwina Gower. Terry Denniston, UTC Chief of Staff, who keeps us all in line, including Janie. Uh, Lofton Stewart, Executive Director of the UTAA and Interim President of the UT Foundation. Let's welcome all of them tonight. Before I forget, before I begin talking about the Outstanding Service Award, I had to say a special word about Kim White because I'm an example of what Kim White does for this university. She gave me a phone call when she was the, pat, the, the existing president, or you were past president, I think. You, you, were, you, were, you were, no, you were the current president, getting ready to turn into the past president, kind of like me. And she gave me a call and said, how would you like to be involved with ETC? And that's why I'm standing here today. And I think that's just a perfect example of a mentor that she's been to me and to give me this opportunity to serve my university. And I want to personally say thank you for that. And she's going to be in England during my picnic on May the 19th when I hand off the gavel to Doug. 
And I, w I was going to say those words then, so it's a really great opportunity to say them now. So thank you, Kim. I'll probably say that anyway with you out bit, without you being there. All right, let's talk about the Outstanding Service Award. In 1985, the Outstanding Service Award was initiated to honor an individual who has given outstanding service to the university and to the community. The words of King George VI epitomizes this award. The highest of distinctions is service to others. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Steve Engel, UTC Chancellor, to the podium to recognize Ms. Kim White, UTC Class of 1982, and a Omega, the 215 recipient of the Outstanding Service Award. Before I begin, I just want to thank Mike for all of his service as uh, President Alumni Council. <clears throat> um, I, we started about the same time in, in our roles, and uh, so this will be his final commencement coming up. I think we will have done eight together, <clears throat> so um, thank you. And I also have to thank somebody who, from the time I was named, has really been there, is Lofton Stewart, who is no stranger to Chattanooga um, <clears throat> as uh, director of the Alumni Association for the whole University of Tennessee system-wide and has stepped up as a leader for the foundation for the last year and a half. <clears throat> and during his time, I think it's a record fundraising year also, um, breaking all records. We're at the 2020 goal this year for the University of Tennessee under his leadership. It's been a pleasure to work with you, Loft, and thank you for all you're doing. <clears throat> And, and also, I know they were acknowledged, but um, Fred O'Bear and his wife Ruth and Bill Stacy, um, what great partners to have. I've told them many times we're standing on their shoulders and building with what they've helped with this university. But I know there are a number of alumni here who were students when they were chancellor. And I can tell you, we all appreciate what they've done for our university every single day. So thank you for being such great partners. So Kim White is a River City president, lives and breathes downtown Chattanooga. She not only talks the talk, walks the walk, she works downtown, lives downtown, and plays in the heart of the city and encourages all of us to do the same, has connected our students and led a walking tour of our students through downtown so that they could appreciate what we have here in Chattanooga. I think there are few people who demonstrate service to their community and their alma mater more than Kim White. <clears throat> A Chattanooga native, Kim moved away for over 20 years, and she will, will tell you how amazed she is at how far the city has come since she left. And she's been such a great part of this renaissance of Chattanooga and seeing it shine, and I think for all of us coming in, I've been here almost two years with my wife, and um, what a great place to be, but the possibilities are just phenomenal of where Chattanooga is gonna go, and the university with it. So daily, she works tire tirelessly to emphasize the opportunities and assets of our city, and the importance of the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga to our community. <clears throat> Graduating from UTC in 1982 with a BA in art, Kim was involved in many activities. She served as president of Chi Omega and uh, where she is active and engaged today. She had a successful 16 year career with a Fortune 500 company, Altel Communications. And then she returned to Chattanooga where she served as president and CEO of the Corker Group and Luckin Holdings. She's a dedicated supporter of her alma mater, serving on the UTC Alumni Board and as the president of the Alumni Board. She currently serves on the UC Foundation and has been chair of the Real Estate Committee, which this past year has been an incredible amount of work, um, including selling the Chancellor's residence on Lookout Mountain is one of the things that was done. <laughs> um, and that is getting a lot of love and completely remodeled uh, by the people who bought it. Um, she's also currently a trustee for the University of Tennessee Foundation. She's the incoming chair of the Chancellor's Roundtable, 
And she served on numerous university administration search committees and the UTC Athletics Board. One of the places I interacted the most with, with Kim was uh, the university was looking at a housing project which was going to face McKenzie Arena. And we for a time thought of putting the housing into the interstate building on Macaulay, the, one of the two state office buildings, and Kim kept saying Vine Street is where it ought to go. Vine Street's where it ought to go. Um, and I pledged to her I would work to bring the university to downtown if she would work with me to bring downtown to university. And working with some urban planners that she uh, had hired with the uh, uh, foundations in town, Macon Teledano, um, we had our housing people say, this ought to front on Vine Street. We'll put the parking underneath, a uh, 600 place parking garage underground, and <clears throat> we'll have some uh, food service, a branch of our bookstore on Vine Street, corner of Vine in Houston. And <clears throat> she's worked with Unum to look at a, a RFP where they will develop their property from Houston up to Georgia for housing and retail on the ground floor. And Vine Street is really going to be transformed. And what a gateway to our new library um, on the corner of Vine and Douglas. And just great dedication, very nice persistence. She never got mad. She just kept asking questions really nice. <laughs> and we finally came around um, to, I think, look at a great solution that's going to be wonderful for our campus as well as for Chattanooga. And so I, that's one example where I can tell you, boy, did she make a difference. <clears throat> in her free time, I don't know how she has free time with all the volunteer boards and things she's on, in addition to River City, but she is an active community volunteer. She's a member of the board of the Enterprise Center, Chattanooga Area Chamber of Commerce, an active member of the Rotary Club in Chattanooga, and Signal Mountain Presbyterian Church. She co-chaired Mayor Andy Burke's downtown task force for Chattanooga Forward and was recognized by the Lung Association as a woman of distinction and Chi Omega for community service and leadership. So Kim and her husband Joe Dan have been married for 26 years and uh, she credits much of uh, her success for his willingness to move six times and his unbelievable support for her. So please joining me, join me in uh, congratulating Kim Hudson White, our 2015 Outstanding Service Award recipient. Kim. Thank you, Chancellor Engel, uh, and thank you to the UTC Alumni Board. I don't know of an honor that means more to me. I love this university, and I love this city. And to be recognized for um, what I've done for both is really amazing. Um, and Mike Griffin, to share this stage with you, because it seems like yesterday, it was 35 years ago that we were in school, uh, but it's a fantastic bonus to get to do that. So thank you very much. Roger Smith, thank you for that beautiful player, uh, prayer. Your and Claire's friendship has been amazing. And my tailgate group down here that we cheer on the mocks at all the ball games, it's great to have you here for your support. You know, it's humbling to look at the list of past recipients and know um, the big shoes I have to fill. And I know many of them are here tonight, and Ruth, and the Bears, and Stacy, and Charlie Pierce. Um, but it's a lot to live up to, and it makes this award even more uh, meaningful to me. So uh, thank you for what you all have done. This room is filled with so many friends and community partners that I get to work with day in and day out um, on different projects, committees, and on boards. And to know that I get to work beside each one of you to make our community better and our university better, it really is an awesome privilege. Collaborations and partnerships have been key to the success of our city, but it's also been key components to any success that I've had. I'm blessed to have an amazing network of friends, family, and supporters. And it's your presence tonight that really makes this evening so very special. To receive an award that means so much, surrounded by people that mean so much, fills me with an overwhelming sense of gratitude and thankfulness. So tonight, I have an opportunity to tell you thank you. Um, to my family, who lets me be the general, and act like they don't mind. 
my brother Billy and his sister-in-law that have given me wonderful nephews to love. My oldest nephew Rush and his wife that thank goodness I have a mock legacy in the family <laughs> since my brother chose orange and my sister has a degree of many colors. <laughs> And to my aunt and uncle that drove in to join uh, tonight, thank you all for being here. I want to especially thank my parents. I know it wasn't easy having a perfect child. <laughs> and Billy, I wasn't talking about you. <laughs> but mom, you've shown me what unconditional love looks like and feels like. And I'm truly blessed because of that. Uh, what an amazing gift you've given me. And dad, you're a great example of giving to and putting others first. Even though one time that meant giving away our generator to another family during an ice storm and a power outage. <laughs> you both are wonderful examples of living lives filled with integrity and uncompromised character. Thank you for the sacrifices you made in order for me to even come to college. And Dad, it doesn't seem that long ago that you pulled an all-nighter with me at UTC campus finishing a sculpture project, right? <laughs> to my mentors, Ray and Betty Fox. Ray was not only Dean of Admissions when I was here, but he and Betty were my Sunday school teachers. They helped push me out of my comfort zone to ask me to teach Sunday school when I didn't know what to say or how to say it. And I really believe their encouragement was the beginning of me finding my own voice. To my dear friend, great English professor and advisor to Chi Omega, see these people didn't know you were Chi Omega, did they? <laughs> Fran Bender Rushing, what an awesome role model you have been and supporter all these years. Thank you for your friendship. To my Chi Omega sisters, all right, shout out. Yeah, all right. Um, many of whom are here tonight, we've known each other for 35 years. And in some ways, unless I look in the mirror, it just seems like yesterday. When I moved back to Chattanooga 12 years ago, it had been over 20 years since we were all together. But when we reconnected, it felt like we'd never been apart. It's a privilege to call you all lifelong friends. How I love our getting together for Eleusinian or football games or just keeping up with you on Facebook. It was through you I first learned the importance of women, women supporting other women. So thank you for your love and your support. And to my brunch bunch sisters back here in the back. I knew they'd do a shout out. What an amazing group of women, all of whom have had, made a tremendous impact on the city. To describe us, I like to say, we're like, kind of like the women from The View without all the drama. <laughs> we're of different ages, from different backgrounds and religions. We have different political beliefs. Okay, to be honest, I'm the only one with a different political belief. <laughs> but we embrace, each other we embrace each other's differences, celebrate each other's successes, mourn each other's losses, but most of all, just joy enjoy being with one another. I consider it an honor and a privilege to be a fellow br br brunch buncher, and that's a hard thing to say. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. To my River City team, I know you do a shot too. <laughs> I am so fortunate to work with a tremendously talented team. They are committed to excellence and work behind the scenes to help move the needle of our downtown forward. I learned early on that you're only as good as the people you surround yourself with, and because of them, most days I look really, really good. Thank you for all you do for me and for the city. To the UTC staff and team, you're like family to me. In fact, some weeks I think I spend more time with you than I do my family. Your love and commitment for the university makes it easy for people like me to want to love and support it. And last but not least, I want to thank my husband of 26 years, Jodan, an amazing supporter and cheerleader for me in the city. There was absolutely no way I could do what I do without him. He can tell you most days it takes two people to be me. <laughs> I am so fortunate to be loved by a man who not only lets me, but wants me to be all I can be. He moved six times to five cities and three states to be supportive of me and my career. He's been to more galas and banquets and luncheons than he probably cares to remember. And Jodan, I know you're a diehard Gamecock fan, but you sure look good in blue and gold. <laughs> I love you and am blessed to have you for a partner. Thank you. And thank you all for being here and sharing this special night with me. I am passionate about this university because I know the impact it's had on my life and the impact it has on countless other lives. It's an honor to try to pay it forward and that's what I've attempted to do. I arrived on campus in the late 70s as a teenager lacking self-esteem and confidence in search of a direction. 
I left four years later not only with a degree, but with a greater sense of myself and what I was capable of achieving. UTC gave me a great foundation. I have awesome memories of my time here. This is where I first started to get active and involved through a variety of organizations. My experience helped me to understand the importance of volunteering and giving back and working with others. My time at UTC prepared me for life, not just a job or a career, and it served me well for 35 years. And isn't that what a great education should be all about? An absence from Chattanooga for 23 years also helped me realize just how special this city is. When I graduated, I moved away like so many others at that time, but what a different city we are today. Since choosing to come back to my hometown 12 years ago, I've had the opportunity to experience firsthand what makes this place so special, and it's the people. It's the people in this room. People giving back and working together for the betterment of an entire city. That's what makes it special and unique. It's been a privilege to play even a small role in that. Yes, I love this university and I love this city. The success of each goes hand in hand and I am truly honored to receive the Outstanding Service Award tonight. Thank you all for being here and making the night so special. Thanks. Congratulations, Kim. Tonight we are also honoring our 2015 Distinguished Alumnus Award recipient, Bill Landry, class of 1972. The Distinguished Alumnus Award was established in 1969 to recognize alumni who have made significant contributions to the community and society and whose accomplishments and career activities have reflected glory on our university. Each recipient of this award has demonstrated the ideal of excellence that our university strives to instill in all students and alumni. In his book, On the Journey to Achievement, author John Hick Hickey states, always remember that the lessons you learn in life are never meant just for you. They are like all the gifts that are, they are meant to be used, shared, never hoarded, and hidden. Our honorary tonight has certainly blessed many by sharing his life experiences. Dr. Angle, please come to the podium to recognize Bill Landry as our 2015 Distinguished Alumni. Well, think, as many of you know, uh, Bill Landry is the voice, host, uh, narrator, and co-producer of the Heartland series, a, a historical program on East Tennessee, which has aired on WBIR-TV for nearly 30 years. <clears throat> he graduated from Notre Dame High School in Chattanooga and attended UTC on a football uh, scholarship, studied with Dorothy Hackett Ward, Jim Lewis and, and John Tinkler. And he received a Bachelor of Arts in Literature, English, and Arts in 1972. <clears throat> he continued his studies at the Dallas Theater Center, graduating with a Master of Fine Arts degree. And he received an Honorary Doctorate of Humanities degree from Lincoln Memorial University in 1999. <clears throat> For over 30 years, Bill has written, produced, and performed in his one-man play, Einstein the Man, <clears throat> which he's presented over 1,000 times in 38 states and two provinces of Canada. In the year 2000, the play was distributed throughout the state of Tennessee by the Department of Education and made available to middle and high school students. He worked during the Knoxville's, uh, Knoxville World's Fair as a riverboat captain in the TVA exhibit when the fair ended, he continued to play the role of Captain Nat on a TVA tour of the Cumberland and uh, Tennessee and uh, Mississippi rivers as part of TVA's 50 year anniversary celebrations. The Heartland series has over 1900 short features and 150 half hour length programs. He's told me he could do a program on pretty much anything. Uh, sweet tea is one thing we were talking about, and he said, yeah, I could do a program on that. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> I bet we'd all want to watch it, too, after talking to him, I can tell you. He's won numerous awards, including two Emmy Awards, six Iris Awards, and the National Association of Television Program uh, Executives Award, two bronze medals, and a silver from the International, New York International Film and Television Festival, 
and a Theodore Roosevelt Award for Best Outdoor Documentary. In 2003, Landry's production of the George Washington Carver Project was distributed by the Tennessee Department of Education to schools in Tennessee through the Carver Project website. In 2011, he published a book on East Tennessee history titled Appalachian Tales and Heartland Adventures. He's also written Telling It for the Truth and a chapter in, in this book entitled The Harlequin Massacre relates a story of a time when he toured with a UTC acting troupe, the Harlequins, during racially charged times. His most recent book is a children's book entitled Buddy, Dog of the Smoky Mountains. It's a story of his dog, who like people, likes to roam through the Smoky Mountains. And Buddy is known to follow local hikers only to return home to Bill after a long day's walk. So deeply rooted in the Appalachian region, Bill has served on many boards, including the Beck Cultural Exchange Board, Clarence Brown Theater Board, Princess Theater Foundation Board, and the Sequoia Birthplace Museum Board. And in 2011, he was appointed a uh, member of the Tennessee Historical Commission by Governor Bill Haslam. So Bill and his wife Sandra are currently in the process of moving from Tallahassee, Tennessee, located in Blunt County, to Knoxville. So having moved not too long ago, we were commiserating about uh, doing that. So please join me in congratulating Bill Landry, our 2015 UTC Distinguished Columbus recipient. Bill. Thank you. When, uh, when Janie called me and said uh, that they were doing the Legends and Leaders Banquet and I was going to be a leader, I thought she said eater. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I'm just glad anybody showed up. But uh, I want to thank uh, all my friends that have come uh, and, uh, and you all for coming. Uh, most of you don't know what a Heartland series episode is, and uh, you like me anyway. So <laughs> the, uh, this is uh, it's like being away for a long time. My, my grandfather went to UTC. Of course, it was Chattanooga then, and my mother went to Chattanooga, and uh, uh, that's how I got here. The, uh, uh, Many of you all also, you know, got me through school, and uh, I just wish my mother was here. I have eight brothers and sisters, and uh, some of them are here, the ones that could be. And some of them are working, and some of them are, are not here. And, uh, you know, I think uh, I turned 65 this year, and what happens when you get older is they start giving you ribbons for living. <laughs> and... Uh, I'm very glad to give them, and uh, what that makes you do is makes you think about everybody, you know, who's not here, that uh, we admired and that uh, helped us get where we are, and, uh, you know, Dorothy Hackett Ward uh, was like a mother to me, as she was to most of us. Uh, Robert Duffy was our brother. We did a lot of uh, things uh, together. We went to graduate school together. Mac, uh, uh, I've known Mac Smotherman for 40, 50 years. And, uh, we played the same role for one year. And we had so many shows to do that uh, Mac and I both did Einstein. You know, whoever, whoever was sober would, <laughs> would go on. Uh, <laughs> he was looking at you, Mac. <laughs> not, that's not exactly true, but. Uh, the late 60s and early 70s, you know, it was an exciting, energized, uh, participatory time <laughs> in Chattanooga. And uh, it was a great time. It was the greatest time probably to go to college, you know, in my lifetime. And, uh, but uh, I can remember the day uh, the Kent State kids got killed. We were all out in the quadrangle, and we, we weren't going back to class, and we were going to try to figure out how to start some kind of revolution. And uh, we did our best, and, and now it's for somebody else to do. Uh, it was the University of Chattanooga then, 
And uh, I sure wish that we could have had the option, we did have the option to get our degrees then from University of Chattanooga, which was the college that I started at and uh, finished at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. And uh, we had the option to get our degree and our diploma from U University of Chattanooga. But, it, but we were so excited about becoming a, a bigger school that we didn't have sense enough to get the degree from Chattanooga, which would have been worth something now. <laughs> but uh, it was here that we got word, you know, and uh, the best years of my life were probably spent rehearsing The Winner's Tale, which was a play we took two years to rehearse. And it was pretty good by then. And, uh, it was also the, the two years that we worked on the, uh, the, uh, the theater group, worked on the uh, the Harlequins together, and uh, it made a difference. I remember Doug Pascal and Dr. Orr and Dr. Fulton. Great, great English department then, and uh, right before it became the UTC system. And uh, as soon as it did, some of those great teachers ended up somewhere else. But uh, they were here for our time, and I'm grateful, and, uh, and particularly Dr. Tinkler, who helped me probably as my advisor. I've told this story, but uh, I got excited in the English comprehensives once and uh, didn't put any punctuation in it that hurt my grade, you know. And, <laughs> but I had to take them again, and Dr. Tinkler was my advisor, and I think we read, you know, everything the last six months of college. And, and uh, after we took those comps again, I went by his office, and he wasn't there, but you had to go up a winding, you know, 1890s building with some kind of room where there was an office for some kind of professor in there. And Dr. Tinkler wasn't there, but he did write a sign on the wall that said, on his door, because it was locked, it said, Landry Passes. And <laughs> it meant a lot to me. And, uh, but uh, I miss him and, and the others, too. A day doesn't go by that I don't think of Robert Duffy and, and Dorothy Hackett Ward in my time at Chattanooga. And uh, I just try to tell everybody that you turn around one day and you're 65. So you better make your days count. And, uh, you know, my mother always said, you know, to, to, to whom much is given, much is expected. And uh, I guess that's what, that's what Einstein taught us, too. And uh, all, of, all the great leaders and eaters. <laughs> and uh, Einstein, he, always, he said this, he said, do not pride yourself on the few great men who have been born on your earth through no fault of yours. <laughs> Reflect rather on how you treated them when they were here and how you have followed their teachings. So uh, if I had my druthers, this would have been a toga party. But, <laughs> but I'm very honored to be here with you all. That's, that's, that dates me, <laughs> but, uh, that's okay, you, and uh, thank you for having me and, and awarding me this, and maybe you'll you know, make a better choice next year. <laughs> I hope you're all even a little more proud about being part of the University of Tennessee <laughs> <laughs> to see uh, you know, the uh, personality, character, but uh, you know, what an education means. I think you heard that from both our recipients and the role that UTC played, University of Chattanooga. But uh, thank you so much for coming to uh, participate in this so that we could honor you both. So. And thank you all for being here. I'll turn it back over to Mike. Please join me uh, in thanking our students and other alumni, university staff who, who have assisted uh, with this evening's event. We also want to thank the Chattanooga Golf and Country Club for their excellent service. I would ask that, our fo uh, that following our adjournment, tonight's honorees, as well as the uh, past recipients of both awards, come forward to the podium for photos. 
Tonight has been a special night for all of us, and the Alumni Board hopes that each of you has, have enjoyed our Legends and Leaders celebration. Would tonight's honorees please stand at this time? You each bring honor to the university, and we have enjoyed this opportunity to recognize your many accomplishments. We are so fortunate to have alumni and friends like you who represent our university so well. Please join me in another round of applause for our 2015 Outstanding Service Award recipient, Kim White, and the 2015 UTC alumna, uh, alumnus, Bill Landry. <laughs> 